So this is the GSB-201 linear amplifier and uh, this was built uh, by the Young Spring and Wire Company in Burbank, California. It uses four 811s. It's kind of the grandfather of all of those tabletop linears that would come and uh, it's capable of a couple thousand watts uh, PEP in some modes. Let's turn her on. Now I have it out of the case because I uh, was using some deoxid on some of the contacts on the relays and the contacts on the variable capacitors and switches and so on. I do this about every 10 years and make sure the tube sockets and everything are good. So it's in the tune mode right now. Let's go to operate. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta. Whiskey Uniform 2 Preston Mark. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta. You're 5 and 9 here in the state of New Hampshire. My name is Mike. Mexico, India, Kilo, Echo, over. Roger, Roger, Mike, and good afternoon to you from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Mike, you're 5 and 9 also into Montego Bay. The name here is Hugh Hotel Uniform Golf Hotel. The whiskey. Yes, there's just something about the warm glow of four tungsten filament 811As in a tabletop linear. This is the classic Gonset GSB-201 linear amplifier. Now this, uh, this amplifier was something that I came into back in the late 90s. Uh, one of the uh, officers of one of the companies I worked for, he said that he had bought this in uh, 1961 and it eventually saw its way to Vietnam. Uh, this guy was an intelligence officer and he used this in Vietnam with a uh, Holocrafters SR-150. So a classic setup. Now this, uh, this 201 can probably be considered the grandfather of all those four 811 style Ameritrons and so on. It's the classic four tube setup. Very, very forgiving with tubes. You can put 811s, 811As, 812As, and 572Bs in this amplifier. And they, they give you instructions on how to bias it for each type of tube. So it'll work with almost anything. <laughs> uh, the CWDC input power is 1000 watts. Sideband PEP input 1500 watts. And if you're using the 572Bs that goes up to 2000 watts unmodulated AM uh, DC input 400 watts uh, for 811As 600 watts for the 572Bs RTTY 750 watts for 811As 1000 watts for uh, 572Bs uh, power consumptions uh, between 2 and 2.5 kilowatts peak and input and output impedance 50 ohms and it's your typical uh, weight for a tabletop linear, establishing the genre at 81 pounds. So this is your tabletop linear of 1960-1961. So I want to be able to use this with my newly acquired TS520 and see if we can do a little maybe 40 and 15 meter work with it. So I've resurrected it. Now I have done some things inside uh, with the Gonset. I uh, have improved the of course I, I recapped it, the high voltage. And I've improved the biasing and switching. So now you just need a, a closure from the transceiver 
for the thing to uh, to come in. Uh, I've improved the filament so that there's less hum with the amplifier on the air, especially with the AM mode. And uh, it's working very, very well. And I've never had to change an 811A in this amplifier. And I've used it off and on for probably 25 or 30 years. So there it is, the GSB-201. Let's get this thing hooked up. Now the amplifier has provisions to do uh, TR switching with the receiver. So it has an extra SO239, which I've got taped up here. Uh, when using it with a transceiver, uh, it goes straight through and uh, it's a typical uh, in-line switching. But with the receiver, it puts the antenna over to the receiver terminal, if you want to use it that way, with separates, which I've done quite a bit. But uh, we're going to be using it with a transceiver, so we're not using that third port. Um, this is the ground post here. You put a solid ground on this amplifier. Uh, I have uh, added another fuse holder here. Uh, and I have two heavy-duty fuse holders. And over here is the switching, which used to be 117 volts AC. And that now is uh, set up for 28 volts DC. And you simply short those two terminals. And the 28 volt DC relay inside that I have added actually does all of the biasing and switching and so on to uh, keep the thing happy when you're in receive mode. So this thing is all up to date as far as the uh, the innards go. And let's see if we can get this thing hooked up properly and on the air. And basically you short out these two terminals and it takes the bias from cutoff to linear amplification. So there is a bias supply inside this linear of, you know, over negative 100 volts that cut the tubes off. So that's the way they used to control it. I do the same thing, but I added a relay so you just have a set of dry contacts out here and you're not dealing with a negative hundred volts running around the shack. Instead it's just a, a switch to ground. Now most modern transceivers, and I say modern like the, uh, the TS520 from the, uh, the 70s is a modern transceiver, um, they'll have a set of contacts on the back and usually these are normally closed or normally open contacts in this case we need normally open contacts and that's uh, 4 and 5 on this plug and I've wired that down so when I press the key or when I press the microphone button you know to transmit it takes that bias off and the uh, the tubes go from full cutoff to linear operation for uh, for linear operation so very very simple way of switching the linear from complete cutoff where it doesn't draw much current at all to uh, linear operation. Of course at the same time that it's taking care of the bias situation it's uh, also actuating the main TR relay inside the linear amplifier. That allows the amplifier to go from straight through in receive mode to hooking the amplifier in line in series with the coax and giving you the amplification on transmit. So all of that is happening in the box. Um, another feature I have on this amplifier that I've added is a, uh, a startup relay. That uh, allows the tubes to have some uh, filament emission before applying the high voltage. It's just gentle on the tubes. So that's a soft start circuit I've added to the linear amplifier. Now the other cables you're going to need are your jumper cables. Your RF jumper cables that go between the rig and the linear, and the linear amplifier, and usually your SWR meter or your tuner. And uh, this is uh, some RG8U, okay, these are old-fashioned jumpers, they'll work fine. Um, a more modern uh, coax cable might be LMR240 or LMR400, something like that. Uh, uh, going between the transceiver and the linear, you can use smaller coax, but uh, once you get into uh, linear power, you're going to need some coax that can handle high power at low loss. ADH 
73. Now, this has got the uh, 3500C. Talk about the Heath kit. Yeah, it's a Heath kit SB2, uh, two, uh, 220. Hmm. Okay, I've got the other, the other version there. Uh, that one goes back to, I guess, uh, I don't know, the 70s. But I didn't, I didn't buy it new. I bought it from someone else who gathered the parts over a period of time when he was working for Heath kit in, uh, in Needham. <laughs> The tube was never there, and then when I wanted to get it, back in the day, I looked at what? I was shocked at what the tube cost, but I'm even, I'm even paralyzed from what it costs now. I see the price, I'm like, this is absolutely insane. So I've got this, uh, this amplifier that I put together with no tube. Back to you, WU2D? Yeah, QSL. I got the WU2D, and, um... You might check uh, Penta Labs or RF Parts, maybe. Or maybe he's got an idea for you. Um, yeah, these tubes here aren't too bad. They're about 250 each. Not too bad. And I haven't even thought about getting new ones. These are working great. A WU2D, uh, go ahead. This is Whiskey 2, Voice of America, Brian, Western New York. Anyway, you guys are talking about amplifiers. I'm playing with an amp now. I actually have the cover off. It's in uh, Widowmaker uh, status here. I don't want to fall on it or I'll get shocked. Uh, this is the GSB-201 from around 1960, and it uses four 811As. It's in the tune position right now. So the handle is Mike, WU2D. Back to you, uh, uh, Brian. Over. Hey, hello there, Mike. Uh, yeah, it's doing a great job for you right now. Yeah, WA1SOV, I think we talked the other day. Uh, Jerry, I think we talked the other day, as a matter of fact. Okay, we are now in the operate mode. I don't know if that made any difference at all. I can hear some clicking going on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, did you notice anything with my transmission? This is WU2D. Uh, pick it up, Jerry. Okay, um, this is in the, the operate mode with the GSB-201, and I'm going to go back to tune now. Okay, this is in the tune mode, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here we are in the exciter mode with the amplifier out of line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so it's supposed to give you 10 dB, and I think it's doing that, right? Yeah, Mike, uh, you were a lot stronger in the, uh, the high, high, high position. And um, the low you dropped off a little bit. And the exciter you dropped, dropped off a lot. Okay, back in the tune position. Well, that's... Just exactly what the amp should do, I guess, uh, because the meter is still pegging out. I need to get the proper watt meter here for this beast. Using the classic TS520 exciter into the GSB201 with four 811As. Yeah, it's sounding good, too. Good audio on that. So the GSB201 uh, amplifier... Um, it has quite a husky power supply, huge power transformer and, and choke system, uh, actually capable of, uh, uh, this, this amplifier is capable of handling 572B tubes to the full legal limit. But I keep the 811As in there for two reasons. First of all, they won't break. They just seem to go forever, and they're very low cost and replaceable. So the 811A is... Uh, just an all-around great tube for a linear amplifier. Now, is it going to give you the ultimate? No, it's a compromise. You'd probably need six of them to have a, a completely uh, full power linear, but um, you can't beat the price of 811As, that's for sure. 
uh, these two brown resistors down here are the bleeders for the high voltage power supply. So uh, when you turn the radio off, it bleeds the, uh, the capacitors down very rapidly, which is a great safety item. It also improves the, uh, the stability and regulation on the power supply, having heavy duty bleeders like that. I have done modifications to this amplifier. Uh, all the components are fairly heavy duty and uh, this thing uh, has not failed me. Uh, the only thing I've done to it as far as mods go, uh, I've got that step start system, but I also have a uh, improved bias system uh, that I've got on the bottom. A, uh, it's basically just a uh, backward transformer that produces the negative 120 volt or so uh, bias, negative 200 volt bias. This radio uh, has three SO239 connectors, meaning it can be used in transceive mode with just two connectors, input-output, or it can be used with a separate transmitter receiver and uh, giving you the RX output on uh, standby. So that's all there is to this thing. Very simple and uh, of course it's a widow maker if you get across the high voltage. Don't do that. But I uh, hit all of the contacts uh, of the variables, the switches and the uh, tube sockets uh, and uh, all the relay contacts with deoxit, made sure everything's all dusted off and clean. We don't want a fire starting inside our linear. And it's going to go back into the case. So for many of you, this has been an exhaustive uh, foray into the world of the early linear amplifiers when single sideband first came along. Uh, the 4811 uh, grounded grid is a classic circuit. Um, I wanted to dig a little deeper in the next video into the history of uh, Gonset and how the uh, GSB-201 came about, some of the players that were involved uh, in the early development of the amplifier. Um, many uh, copies of the 4811s occurred uh, in the ARRL uh, handbook and there were kits that came out. Of course the Heathkit Warrior amplifier was one of them. Uh, even today, the 4811s represents a, uh, a fantastic low-cost option to the more expensive uh, boutique uh, external anode pentodes and so on that we have in our amplifiers today. Um, we'll go a little deeper into the schematic and the modifications. And we'll uh, touch on the soft start idea, which I think is very important. So stand by for part two of the uh, Gonset GSB-201 linear amplifier.